Joining me right now is Senator Cory Booker. Welcome, Senator. Welcome. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank you. Great to see you. Great to see you. Hello, everybody. You've talked about your brother's child, and you have said uh, that your brother's child is a trans activist. How has that shaped your views on this topic? Well, I, I, I have to express a little frustration sometimes where people evolve on issues because suddenly they visit upon their own lives and they say, well, when I found out that I had a, a, a LGBTQ child, suddenly I became in favor of these issues. If we wait for our empathy to expand in that way, um, we will never get to being the nation of liberty and justice for all. Uh, you know, if you're, if you're a man and you see assaults on, on the rights of not just women, but uh, the rights of people that control their own body, you shouldn't say, because I have a wife or a daughter. No, you are a human being. You have a body. Uh, you should be able to understand, as King said, that injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. And so uh, my, my views have, have not evolved because of family members. They've evolved because Bayard Rustin and James Baldwin, proud gay Americans, stood for my rights. It's because people of all black backgrounds, I was taught, as a Christian, I was taught that we, are, we must bring forth the radical love of all people, and that's what has always made me be an advocate for justice, and I will continue to be so, uh, regardless of the incredibly beautiful, wonderful family that I have. On June 12, 2016, I was present as a man with an assault weapon, murdered 49 mostly LGBTQ people of color at Pulse nightclub. I was very lucky to make it out. Unfortunately, my friends were not. That night, we were reminded that LGBTQ people, specifically those of color, are often, too often, the targets of hate violence. With the rise of violence against trans women of color, how will you ensure that law enforcement is equipped to treat marginalized victims of crime with dignity and respect? So first of all, very clearly, uh, it's, it is a national emergency. The majority of the terrorist attacks in this country since 9-11 have been right-wing extremist groups. The majority of them have been uh, white supremacist and hate groups. And, and I will elevate as, as president of the United States an office on hate crimes and white supremacy to make sure it is a presidential level effort to, contact, to protect our country as a whole, but I'm not stopping there. We need to have a Department of Justice that recognizes this as a problem and investigates hate crimes. We must, we must take the steps necessary to keep these weapons out of the hands of people that are doing those crimes, but we can't stop there. 30% of LGBTQ youth, 30% have reported missing school in the last month because of fears for their physical safety. We live in a country where we still see regular, everyday violence and intimidation and bullying against Americans because of who they are. And so, number one, I am going to appoint a Secretary of Education, first of all, that sees the dignity and the worth and the value of every one of our children. And I will have a Department of Education that takes the steps necessary to protect all children in America. Thank you, Senator. I want to get straight to Gavin Grimm, a 20-year-old transgender activist. Gavin. I sued my school after it banned me from using the boys' restroom because I'm transgender. My case was going to be heard by the Supreme Court, but then the Trump administration took the position that Title IX does not protect LGBTQ students, and my case went back to the lower courts. Do you believe that Title IX should protect students on the basis of gender identity and sexual orientation? And what will you do as president to protect LGBTQ youth? Thank you very and much. Senator, I'm sorry, as you're answering, I just want to point out that Title IX is the federal law that forbids discrimination on the basis of sex right. under education. I know you know that, but yes. I just want to clarify. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you very much for this question. So first of all, point blank, this is a real problem in America, and I will, number one, change the Trump administration's uh, guidance back to what the Obama administration's guidance was, that schools could allow people 
to use the bathrooms that conforms with their gender identity. But we cannot stop there. We must use our Department of Justice and our Department of Education's Civil Rights Division to go after schools that are denying people equal rights and equal protections. And that's the last point I want to make. Again, this is very personal to me because there was a time that people used every excuse possible to deny rights to women in this country, to minorities in this country. And folks literally had to march and fight and struggle uh, to allow there to be laws that, that govern equal protection. My parents and grandparents had stories of being denied the ability to stop at restaurants traveling across country or use restrooms and bathrooms, had people look down on them and said their associations, that the Bible didn't justify uh, their associations. We as a society now reject that kind of bigotry and hate. As your president, I will actively as much as people who are activists who fought for that equality for black Americans, I fight for it with the same ferocity, with the same sense of urgency every single day for LGBTQ Americans. I will stand up and call this country to remember that patriotism is love of country, and you cannot love your country unless you love all of your country, men and women. And love is not a sentiment, it is not saccharine, it is not an anemic. Love demands sacrifice and service and the understanding that if your rights are denied, then my rights are compromised. That's the kind of leadership I will provide in the White House. Hello, Senator. I worked as a health educator providing HIV education and screenings at an LGBT center. I told my clients about a drug called Truvada, which when taken daily, can help provide almost absolute protection against becoming HIV positive. A monthly supply of Truvada costs less than $6 to make. However, its manufacturer, Gilead, charges more than $1,600. This severely limits access to preventive care. What actions would you take as president to address this cost barrier? So, I, thank you, that is a great question. That is a, a really great question. And you know, I live in a low-income black and brown community. And in fact, when it comes to HIV and AIDS, we see often the communities that are most seeing the expansion, the ones that are least able to access a lot of the drugs that can do preventative, like PrEP. And so to me, it's unacceptable that pharmaceutical companies are gonna profit in this way off of the backs of people who urgently need life, what could be life-saving drugs. And so we're gonna do a number of things to lower prescription drug costs right away if I'm President of the United States by using Medicaid, Medicare to negotiate down prices, taking patents away from companies that unjustly raise their prices, creating a law in this country that you cannot raise the price of drugs higher in this country than you're selling them in others. These are all things that we're gonna do. But PrEP is so important in this country right now. And I'm gonna make sure that like Gavin Newsom did, who pushed in California to have it be over the counter without a prescription, that's a great step in the right direction. Uh, and more than that, we're gonna to fight to make sure that health insurance companies actually cover this so more people are accessible. Medicaid and Medicare to cover this as well. And I wanna say one last thing because this idea of preventing the spread of HIV and AIDS is so critical. And that's why legislation I've introduced as a United States Senator we need to get back to. Number one, we need to do more sex education in this country that is science-based, um, which is something that's really important. Thank you, Senator. Good yep. evening. Good evening, Senator. That is one of the most handsome haircuts. I've seen. <laughs> I was. <laughs> uh, I, were, you, were you about to say the same thing? I was. I was going to say Thank nice you very haircut. Much. <laughs> All right. You are a beautiful man. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Many people have no idea that. Make for... our president bald again. Yes. yes. <laughs> I'm here for it. All right. <laughs> Many people have no idea that for decades, gay men were permanently deferred from do donating blood in the U.S because of outdated draconian regulation, regulations not supported by science. The FDA has only recently reduced the ban to one year after intercourse. Gay folks should never be discriminated against, but it's particularly painful when our community wants to help after a disaster or a mass shooter targeting our community, as in the case with Pulse. Will you commit to working with the FDA to remove this harmful ban? Um, uh Two words, absolutely yes. Um, and, and one statement. You know, when you're a president of the United States, you have to set the tone 
uh, and the temperature. We should be using our platforms, the, the new generation of precedents. We see a president every day that's using his platforms in unorthodox ways to demean, to degrade, to put in misinformation and outright lies. If I am your president, uh, as the first ex gender in that office ever, uh, I'm going to be using my platforms every day to dispel ignorances, to challenge people, to have a more courageous empathy, to create a more revival of civic grace. Uh, that's why even on this campaign, I've gone out and been tested for HIV, trying to get rid of the kind of stigmas that still undermine this society. We have a whole lot of truth telling to do in this country, and we've got a lot of work to do to pull, pull out of the shadows people who often relegated their struggles, their injustices. We've just seen yet another black transgender American murdered uh, in this country just last month. This makes the 19th this year. The suffering of so many people in the LGBTQ community, the truth about them is, is shrouded in the ignorance and hate that we see in this world. So not only am I going to change policies, change laws, uh, get an activist department of justice, but I'm going to be using my platform every day uh, to tell the truth, to heal, to bring the truth forward so that we Thank can be a nation that's far more progressive on these issues. Thank you, Senator. Thank you so much. And we'll see you next Thank week. Thank you very much. At CNN's yeah. debate in Ohio. Yeah. Thank you. Hey, this is Cory Booker. If you like what you're watching, please subscribe to our channel. I'm excited about you doing just that. And also go over to CoryBooker.com to find out even more.